Grace be unto everybody. Uh, I do greet you in that precious name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Son of the living God. Now, I want to talk about a few things today, uh, something I've seen for everybody to participate by way of YouTube. I believe it was Corey Minor presented a question, uh, when was Paul baptized or was Paul baptized? I can't exactly remember. Uh, we're going to, an excellent uh, topic of conversation, we're going to try to get into that. Also, we want to make mention of, we have a, a, a staunch Geno Jennings uh, supporter uh, by the name of Drea C. We want to present her uh, as well with the question, if we can, Lord willing. Uh, well, l let me start there, right? Now, to Drea C., you know, I'm speaking from experience in that I was under someone who thought he was an apostle, he thought he was a prophet. He wanted all the titles and pretty much they'll roll out the red carpet for that man, you know, worship. You know, people, you know, you, you, you really wonder and uh, would people actually want to kill for Geno Jennings? My goodness, the way uh, so many people would ride with him, even if he's wrong. Right. So my question would be this. Right. If Geno Jennings is getting away from being called an apostle. Or if it looks like Geno Jennings is getting away from being called an apostle, if that was the case, would you still uh, support that man even after he told you, oh, hey, he made a mistake in calling himself an apostle? Would you still support that man? That's my question to Drea C. since she seems like she's such a, a, a staunch supporter of Mr. Jennings. You know, now on this channel, I believe in the apostle and our high priest, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of Nav Nazareth, amen. That's the seed of David, which was raised from the dead, according to my gospel. And also with Paul, priest, and all the apostles, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of God. Now, also, let, let me just make mention of this. Some of these things in the news, because we're watching, amen. We're watching and praying in these last days, amen. We see another so-called spy balloon out there, uh, Recently, AT&T, the communications went down and all this talk of cyber attacks, cyber attacks. And it's really a question that many ponder. Why? Because Americans, like I said before, time and time again, Americans are so spoiled. Tick tock go down. Communications go down. What you going to do? The power grid is hit. So many enemies, Russia, China, North Korea, Iran. Oh, who done it? A cyber attack. Maybe so, is it just a warning? Interesting things to look at. And like I said, Americans don't know how to act. We'll self-destruct from the inside out. Now you have all these third world individuals, Venezuelans, Hondurans, El Salvador, and other nations who are third world, who know how to survive and have lived in environments of a faulty power grid. See, they're used to power outages and those in Haiti. They're used to the power going out. And living third world style. But America's man, we're way too spoiled. So you always got to be on guard, right? And those who say, oh, we're going to this city, we're gonna do this and do that, you have to say if the Lord wills, right? In these last days. Right? Now, let's get right into the word of God. Bear with me, it's a lot going on, a lot to focus on. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that question. Yeah, Paul, he had to be baptized. He had to make it in the Bible way like everybody else. Jesus Christ himself was baptized, right? Now, why would Paul preach the baptism if he himself wasn't baptized? Of course, he was baptized. But let's look at his conversion. Let's pick up uh, Acts, the ninth chapter. Now, Paul was a persecutor of the church. He was a persecutor of Christians. We know that breathing out slaughter had him locked up. He was there when they killed Stephen. So he would kill Christians, basically. Now, Jesus Christ can turn him around. Boy, he could turn around the hardest thug, the hardest gangbanger. And everybody from that wicked lifestyle of street life is still a wicked lifestyle. Jesus Christ can turn you around, right? But Paul, 9-1 of Acts, and Saul, Saul or Paul, right? Yet bringing it out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. So we know he was on his way to Damascus. I believe that's Damascus, Syria. And Jesus Christ, the light from heaven, and he spoke by way of one who spoke in the Hebrew tongue. If we look over there, I believe in this Acts 26, it said he spoke in the Hebrew tongue. And he said, Saul, Saul, why is thou 
persecuting me. It's hard to kick against the pricks. You can't fight against God. You can't fight against the Son of God. Right? So we see that and we know that he fell to the earth. Right? Now we're going to speak about another disciple. And lo and behold, it was Paul who used to, or Saul, who used to persecute the disciples of the Lord. But now the Lord, the Messiah, is going to send the disciple to help Paul and lay his hands on him. And his name was Ananias, right? So let's pick up there, right? Now, after Paul went through everything he went through and the bright light from heaven, he fell down, amen. Let's pick up, right? Uh, Acts the ninth chapter, verse number 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in the vision, Ananias. And he said, behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight. Let me stop right there, because I see that S is capitalized, amen. It must be capitalized for a reason. Because Jesus Christ let us know straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be who can find it. It didn't say many. It said few. So arise and go into a street, which is called Straight. Amen. This is a straight and narrow walk. This is about true holiness. Amen. Right? And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth and hath seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. He gave Ananias that power. That's like a miracle. And miracles are part of that one power and that one spirit. And that one spirit is what brings about miracles. Amen. So he put, uh, he has seen in the vision uh, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Because, you know, afterward he was blinded after that great light. Right. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And there he have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. He had a murder spirit when it came to the church. He had a murder spirit when it came to the saints. You don't believe me? Check out the story of Stephen or Stephen in the book of Acts around 6 and 7. Chapter 6 and 7. But the Lord said, I'm in Acts 9, 15. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. See, Paul saw he was a chosen vessel of mine, is what the scripture said, right? He is a chosen vessel unto me. That's what the scripture say, amen. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. All those who live godly in Christ are going to suffer. Going to suffer some type of persecution. You might suffer being locked up. You might suffer by way of your family. But you're going to suffer somehow, some way. Don't nobody want to suffer. And Ananias, I'm in verse number 17 of Acts 9. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. To receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Another question arises, well, when was Paul filled with the Holy Ghost? Well, this is a good uh, candidate to be the answer right here. But nevertheless, that's not the question that we're uh, focusing on, right? Receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. Oh, my goodness, a miracle. Hallelujah. And he received sight for with, and arose and was baptized. Hallelujah. That's water baptism, y'all. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, right? That's water baptism. I believe even Corey Minor now believes that, right? So now to Corey Miner's or uh, all these other individuals, you actually think that when he was baptized, that the formula was, I baptize you now. You think Ananias baptized the apostle or Saul at this time, you think he said, I'm now going to baptize you uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Put him down and brought him back up. No, those were just titles. Now, we know we're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost when we get water baptized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, now, Corey Minor uh, agrees with this. Uh, now, everybody can change, right? 
He said he changed because at first I believe some people are thinking that this was talking about a spiritual baptism. No, this is talking about uh, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Some are not going to agree. But nevertheless, let's continue. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then as then were saw certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Hallelujah. He said straightway. He preached Jesus as the Son of God. What about Gino? What about all these others? Amen. He is. Still is. The Son of God, right? So, let's further elaborate on the testimony given by uh, Apostle Paul, a true apostle. Amen. Everybody want to call their so-called pastor an apostle. It's not true. I don't know any apostles. Let's get that out the way. The only apostle I know is Jesus Christ, who is my high priest, right? Acts 22. Let's wind this up. Amen. Now, uh, even within this experience, who's to say that Paul wasn't baptized with the Holy Ghost and baptized in water? We know he's baptized in water. Was he baptized with the Holy Ghost that day or at that time? It's a good choice, a good candidate. But we're focusing on the water baptism because a lot of people don't have that right. But they can change, right? It's like even Geno Jennings getting away from being called an apostle and eventually coming true and telling people the truth. Amen. Will it happen? Well, time will tell. But I still got to deliver these messages. Amen. So Acts the 22nd chapter, right? Now Paul is giving his testimony of his experience with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That great light that shone from heaven. 22 of Acts, right? The question was asked, why thou persecutest me, right? And I asked, who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth. That's not the Father. That's Jesus Christ of the seed of David, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom thou persecuted, right? Amen. Now, we know his testimony. Read it if you want. But for the sake of time, we're going to pick up uh, Acts 22 and at verse number 12. It says this, and one Ananias a devout man. We know he was a disciple of the Messiah, a disciple of the Lord. Amen. And Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. In the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one. Look at that, it's capitalized. It's talking about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God. He is the just one, and he's the one who's coming back, right? The just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. That's right. He heard it more than once, right? For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. He saw and heard, right? And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. That's talking about the natural baptism, fully submerged in water, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You better get it right before it's too late. Time is winding up. Amen. You see people all scared behind a so-called cyber attack and everything that's going on. And now, and now why tarriest thou? question mark arise and be baptized that's an action word we're dealing with acts and that's action get up and be baptized that's action right faith combined with action faith and works you better get to it he says and now why tarryest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins what do you mean this is natural baptism which washes away your sins some of y'all are still in your sins right Calling on the name of the Lord. It lines up that the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ washes away your sins. Amen. Let's prove it. Let's go to Acts 2 and 38. Very famous passage of scripture. Then Peter, I don't know for two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Let's look at what Peter said, right? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. That's the natural baptism, just like we learn and just like we know, right? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see what the baptism does? It forgives or takes away uh, the remission of sins. That's what it does, right? Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Washing away your sins. That's what the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ does. 
no matter if you want to admit it or not, you need it and you got to preach it before it's too late. So I showed you, yeah, Paul, the apostle, or Saul, he was water baptized naturally, of course, line upon line and precept upon precept. Even if he said, I'm now going to, and last come along and say, I'm now going to baptize you in the name of Christ. That's wrong. Because the name wasn't used. The name which is above every name. That's Jesus. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. Right? So, that's what it is. Yeah. It's a part of salvation. That's why it says it saves you. It is a part of salvation. And you got to get the formula right and understand what Jesus meant when he said baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That name is Jesus. The name given. The name, it wasn't Christ. But we apply Christ, right? Because when you say Jesus Christ, you know you're talking about the Son of God, you're saying it all. The only way to get to the Father. So get it right before it's everlasting too late. I'm going to get off here. I've been on here too much. Till next time, y'all be blessed.